Today, I'll be moving three of my ant colonies into three new nests. The three colonies are my Campanotus Lignopurda experiment, my Lasius flowers, and my Campanotus Herculinus. As you can see, they currently live in three different type nests that are a little bit dirty. And you know what? We're just gonna give them a Saturn nest for the Lignopurda, a Saturn nest for the flowers, and a Saturn nest for the Herx as well. Only problem is, they're not built yet. But it's good we have the magical tweezers. And with a little bit of a BAM, we should have one build. A second build and a third build and there we go three medium satins all ready to be used for three different colonies the first colony we'll be moving is my Campanotus Lignopurda experiment. Now for those who don't know, this is an experiment where two queens are together without actually being together. And as you can see, they are doing quite well. They have a few workers and they have a little bit of brood. What you can also see is they haven't done too well and they're actually in a little bit of a break, not growing too fast. The reason I want to move them is simply because I want a little bit more space to feed them without making the setup bigger and they also need some fresh test tubes. Next to be moved is my Lacius flowers colony. Since the last episode, another queen has sadly died, so they are now down to two queens. Looking at the two queens, they look very healthy though, and they also have a nice brood pile in both the one chamber and the other chamber. But just like with the Lignopurda, they have hit a little bit of a break with lots of larvae, but they're not really developing. But one of the drawbacks with this manually hydrated nest is you can overhydrate it, creating a too humid area and making the colony not want to pupate. And that's the reason why I want to move this colony into a Saturn with test tubes instead. Lastly, we have my possibly brain dead Campanotus Herculinus. Looking at the colony, they look very nice with full gasters. Just like with the other colonies, this colony is also in a little bit of a weird break. As you can see, they have some nice larvae, but these larvae haven't developed since, I want to say, April. And again, I don't know why they do this, but all three colonies seem to be in this weird break. Looking at the queen though, she looks very healthy, the same goes to say with the workers. And yeah, I did say brain dead. if you want to hear that story, you can click the link in the top right corner and see episode 6 of the Campanotus Herculinus. Saying that, why do I want to move these girls? Well, simply because I want a simpler setup and they did well in test tubes and in this nest they have kind of stopped a little bit. I don't blame the nest, I just want to have a more simple setup with test tubes. And that's been a short introduction to all the three new colonies. And let's not wait, let's just move the first colony, being the Campanotus Lignopurda. Now I manually have to move this queen from the test tube into the new test tubes because, well, they're not allowed to leave and they're not allowed to have any signs of life. They have to be stuck in this, and now they're stuck in something else. Saying that, the colony is a little bit confused in the new setup, but they will settle down quite soon. Sadly, I can't say it was as easy with the flowers, because these flowers are the hardest ants I've ever kept and tried to move. They just never want to move, so there's only one solution to making these girls move. And that is simply to open the lid, open the lid of the nest, and put the things together. And there we go, the nest is ripped apart inside the new outworld. Now as you can see, the colony is actually very calm, and they just explore a little bit around and... Yeah, I'm gonna give them a night to move into the new nest. Next is the Campanotus Herculinus, and what I'll do with these is quite simply the same as with the Lignopurdas. I'll open the nest and put them inside the new outworld, simply because I know that these girls never ever leave the nest to actually explore anything. And one day later, everything looks like this. All three colonies happily living in the Saturns. From left to right, we have the Herx, Flavos, and lastly, the Lignopurdas, all living happily within these new test tubes. Starting with the Lignopurda, you can see that the queens are separated and they have settled down nicely. It's actually really interesting because this is the most active colony of the three. I don't know why, but they weren't as active before and now they seem to be very active foraging around in the outworld, which is always a very nice thing to see. Sadly, the same cannot be said about the other colonies. The flowers are calm as always and they settled nice into the new test tube, but they are not really doing anything special. It's really weird that the colony have moved into the water tube instead of moving into the provided test tube. But as you can see in the outworld there's a few deaths and a very relaxing flowers colony. They are not out exploring at all. Lastly we have the Herculinus and oh boy the Herculinus never do anything. As you can see they're just in this dry test tube for some reason and yeah they do absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing to say about these girls. They just sit still all day long and um yeah, they sit still. But we may be able to activate them by giving them a little bit of sugar. So we have three feeding dishes and now we also have one, two 
three cotton balls and with three cotton balls we need to give them a little bit of sugar this is my preferred way of feeding sugar and my preferred sugar is this sugar snap from ant antex the reason i'm feeding them like this is simply because it's a lot harder for the ants to drown and with a little swoop we have the lignopertus fat we have the herx fat and we have the flowers fat and straight after the lignopertus went out to feast just like before the lignopertus was a lot more active and they were straight out feeding and I really love the color of these girls. On this white, you can really see the redness of them. And it was very interesting to see how a lot of workers walked around, but not too many was actually drinking the sugar. But of course, I got a clip of some of them that actually did eat a little bit. Compare this to the flowers, and it's not really the same. The flowers are so timid and they just never ever want to leave the nest. And they have really doomed this their nest because they don't want to exit this tower. Of course, after a while, a few workers did manage to leave the tower and go over and start eating the sugar. But I want to say, let's look at the Herx. Because the Herx... Oh man. The Herx sensed that there was something. You can see with their sensitive antenna that they are smelling the air. And this media actually really seemed to be interested in leaving the nest to see what was going on. But... It's the Hercolinus. And... They don't leave the nest. And another five minutes later, a minor worker wasn't really brave enough and took an 180 and returned again. And this is just pretty much the story with these Hercs. I mean, they seem fit by looking at the Gaster, but they're just so strange ants, at least compared to their sister species, Lignoperda. Because the Lignopertas are just out feasting. Saying that, let's look a little bit of the two Lignoperta queens. You can see this queen is very well fed, and you can also see she has a lot of the larvae. This is the experiment, and compared to when people initially said it wouldn't go well, this experiment still seems to be doing very well. Nothing too special to say, because they're just living their life. Right here we have the second queen, and she also has a little bit of brood in front of her, not nearly as much. But she is living her very exciting life of just sitting completely still. You can see that the workers' gas are also full, and yeah, this indicates a very healthy colony within the Lignopertas. Lastly, after one hour, the flowers was getting out and was getting a little bit more hungry, although they definitely still was a lot more timid and they actually weren't really going out, but I mean, I mean they are discovering the sugar. I mean, now I can count one, two workers sitting on the feeding dish. So if the sugar didn't help, we may be able to give them a little bit of protein. You can see that this is all the action we're getting from the Hercolinus, they're just sitting still. But yeah, let's give them a little bit of protein, and what I do is I simply just put the roach straight inside the outworld. Normally I would use a little feeding dish, like tinfoil, but as we're doing a video and I want to get the nice non-reflective shots, I just fed them directly, and you can see the flowers we're actually now starting to discover the sugar and one worker was actually over with the protein. And yeah, the, it's very strange with all three ant colonies. They just seem to be on a break, especially if we look at the ever crazy Herculinus. I mean, look at this thing. When I tried with it with butter, everything changed. Oh, a reference in the video. But yeah, it's very strange following these colonies because they just don't really develop any of them. All three colonies have hit this break and I'm actually thinking it's due to them being too hot. My coldest room is at the moment the ant room because the rest of the house is a lot hotter due to the sun. But I would ideally try to keep them at 18 degrees because it seems like maybe they are too hot, too hot to produce pupae. But it's just so strange looking at my outworld of my Tetramorium by Carinatum. This colony is only a few months old compared to the nearly two years old colonies we've just looked at and they're just going crazy for protein all over the place. I mean, looking at the nest entrance, they're just busy. Looking around the outworld, they're just busy. By the way, these roaches have been killed, but I haven't cut the nerves in half, so the nerves are still moving around. But looking at the test tubes, this colony is just booming compared to the three other colonies. And again, these three colonies are twice as old. These are almost two years old. And yeah, the Tetramorium by Carinatum is only a few months old. It's just insane. But I do want to say thank you for watching and a special thank you to the Holofer family members. We have Medical Carcase number 9, Connor, and Antix, Simon, Casper, Kai, Antscapes, and Ants Norway. Thank you all for watching and I have been a little bit away and the videos will slow down just a little bit because I simply don't have the time I want to put into these videos and I want to make them a little bit more special. I did also forget to say that all these satins are made by a company called Wakushi and if you want 10% you can type and Holofer in all caps and again the satins were from Wakushi. And saying that, 
that has been it for this video. So don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you all in another video. Bye!